I'm David Knight, and I'm joined right now by Dr. Peter Bregan. Now, as an introduction, uh, reading from his bio here, since 1964, he's been publishing peer-reviewed articles and medical books in his subspecialty of clinical psychopharmacology. This is someone who has clearly spoken out for a very long time, was at the forefront of telling people about the harmful, counterproductive effects of SSRI drugs, how it was driving people to suicide and to mass murder. And we have been trying to tell people for the longest time that the common link in all these mass shootings are the drugs. And yet the big pharmaceutical companies and the media that feed off of the big pharmaceutical companies, look at how much, uh, how many of the commercials are paid for by big pharmaceutical companies. Of course, they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. But we've been trying to tell people what's behind that. But I also wanted to talk to Dr. Bregan about uh, lobotomies, high-tech lobotomies that uh, DARPA is working on because he's been someone who's been at the forefront of pushing back against that. And as we see veterans doing many, many tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, as we see now that uh, that is starting to fire up again, we were just talking to Paul Joseph Watson about how uh, we see this uh, mission creep now in terms of it was first not going to be any troops sent back to Iraq. Now it's going to be 300. Now Obama's saying 500. Now we're getting emails from people saying their entire unit is being trained for deployment within the next few months going back to Iraq. So it looks like they're going to continue to escalate that, continue to keep Afghanistan going on for decades. And so we have a lot of veterans who are suffering from PTSD. And we understand that in the aftermath of World War II, the VA and was treating people with, who, had, who came back, vets who came back with PTSD, they were treating a lot of them with lobotomies. And now we see that DARPA says that they're going to be able to use brain chips to selectively remove memories. And of course, as you start reaching for uh, something to make you wake up from this nightmare when you hear that the government is going to start messing with people's memories, implanting false memories, removing other memories, when that starts to scare you, they say, oh, don't worry. This is for PTSD. And of course, we heard that with lobotomies. And Dr. Bregan was very much uh, a part of the fight in the 1970s in an international campaign to stop the resurgence of lobotomies. And so I wanted to ask him first about that. Dr. Bregan, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, David. This could be a very important show. It's the first time that I'm going to be talking about DARPA. Thank you, thanks to you. And I have just a huge amount of background on this. Uh, this isn't the first time that government agencies have funded what is essentially mind control. Mm -hmm. Back in the 1970s, the Justice Department and the National Institute of Mental Health, quite a combination, funded psychosurgery at Harvard, where they were implanting electrodes into the brains of people that were supposed to be patients but were experimental subjects. They were stimulating parts of the brain. They were obliterating parts of the brain by heating the electrodes. They had people walking around the ward being stimulated without their knowing it by remote control. Mm. And one of the heroes of, uh, of DARPA is a, is a fellow named Jose Delgado who was sort of the godfather of these Harvard programs. And uh, I conducted an international campaign that actually shut down the Harvard program. And I'm proud to say I actually drove Jose Delgado back, uh, back to Spain back in the early 70s. So this is an old goal. Then we had the CIA. So we moved from the Justice Department and NIMH to the CIA funding experiments in Canada with D.E. Cameron, who was a very famous psychiatrist. Even though a Canadian, he was at one point the president of our American Psychiatric Association. He had CIA funds to treat people when he was actually obliterating their memories with shock treatment, then using recorded devices to try to reprogram people and redevelop their personalities. Now, in both these projects, what they really succeeded in doing was destroying the brains of people and destroying their lives. Hmm. Uh, the, the final, this does to sum up with the final version of all of this that uh, I got involved with was the Violence Initiative in 1994. 
My wife and I wrote a book about it called The, the War Against Children of Color. Uh, we found out that the federal government, uh, starting with all of the health agencies, the Justice Department, and the Centers for Disease Control, that these organizations were getting a, a large, were applying for huge federal funding as a group to go into America's inner cities to identify uh, genetically and biochemically why little children in the inner cities would grow up to become violent. This, this was pure racism and it was pure eugenics, which is the usual combination. Yes. And Ginger and I worked, you know, for several years to stop that program too. So this is now a, a reincarnation on a somewhat more sophisticated level yes. of mind control and the government's been at this for ages. But of course, we don't have to worry about it now because it's so high tech. You know, it's like the way they sold the drone strikes saying they were gonna do surgical strikes and yet we see entire wedding parties being taken out. I mean, it, it's still not a surgical strike. And if they say they're gonna be able to go in and selectively mess with people people's minds because they've now got uh, some kind of brain chip, you know, a, a semiconductor that they can use as opposed to doing surgery. It is no less destructive. People need to understand that, you know, you can kill people from uh, a bomb out of a B-52 or you can kill them from a predator drone. You can destroy their minds with a lobotomy surgery or you can destroy their minds with a high-tech brain chip. Uh, and, and you're talking about the minorities. We just recently had a report about a government agency funding research on premature babies, varying the amount of oxygen to them and giving some of them too much oxygen, making them uh, uh, blind and some of them uh, depriving them of oxygen to brain damage them. I mean, that came out and that was being targeted. Most of the cases where they were talking to people were minority people. They came in and they actually, Dr. Bregan, created an acronym called SUPPORT. And they told him, we're with the support group, you know, and they had this little acronym as cover. And these people thought they were just a, uh, a support group. They were going to be coming in, holding their hands, offering them counseling and that sort of thing. When actually they were signing on, they were deceiving them and signing on to a situation where their child was going to be damaged by this deprivation of oxygen or too much oxygen. Yeah, the, you know, it's just an opportunistic. They go after yes. the minorities, partly from racism, but partly it's just flat out opportunism. Let me quickly go down some of these DARPA programs. Can I do that for sure. 60 yeah, go ahead. seconds yeah, here? Definitely. Well, well, first of all, DARPA is uh, funded through, through Obama uh, mm -hmm. and through the military this time. Most of these other programs were through health agencies, the Justice Department, and so on. Uh, one project is to create a black box to implant in brains very much like the one in airplanes that'll keep track of your brain function <laughs> and then even be able to uh, retrieve it after you've died to look at what happened to you. They monitor all of our, our emails and all of our conversations. That's not enough for them. They have to keep a record and I guess store it uh, uh, out in uh, Utah. They have to store it for the NSA, even what we think, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, my wife, Ginger, who works closely with me on these issues and on the uh, was the heart and soul behind the, the stopping the violence initiative against black children was just pointing this out to me today. They want to start with our conversations, but really where they want to go is inside our heads. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so one of them is the black box. Another is interface between brains. Uh, where they want to be people to be able to communicate and influence each other's brains. Um, <laughs> uh, another is uh, influencing uh, brains, and they've been trying to do this with animals, uh, animal brains influencing animal brains, the Internet influencing animal brains. They've got another one about uh, stimulating for lost memories. Uh, you mentioned the one where they can put in chips and then destroy the chips, which would destroy the person. Yes. And the one that I think is the most key, because this is where the drug companies are going to jump jump on. This is where all the money is really eventually going to go. And that's a project called Subnets. And that's at this point a $70 million DARPA project to use brain implants to identify mental disorders like depression, PTSD, addiction. Yeah, there They're you going go. to study what's wrong with brains and then fix the brains. This is subtle lobotomy. And, and you know, what we call mental illnesses are not physical in origin. A soldier who comes back uh, full of guilt and shame and, and horror of war 
and has what's called post-traumatic stress disorder. It's not a disorder, it's just post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. It's what happens to a normal person with a normal brain when you put them through war. Exactly. So they redefine human experiences. Depression is loss of hope. It's profound sadness. It's a feeling of helplessness. All of these understandable human processes are not biological in origin. And when they go in there and tinker, what they're eventually going to do is just very crude control and mostly destruction. Yes. And, and the other thing that, that concerns me is that if they did get a finer means of control, I think that their ultimate goal is to try to make people who absolutely have no conscience or remorse about what they will do who will do anything that they're told, whether that's because they've got some kind of a brain uh, chip in them that is forcing them to do it, or whether they've removed any guilt, any uh, moral conscience that that person might have. I think that's the thing that really scares me because when we look at these experiments, whether you're talking about the Tuskegee experiments that everybody knows about, or some of these that are just recent and a lot of people don't understand about this preemies uh, experiment on the premature babies, or just as I was coming to uh, InfoWars, they had the uh, EPA was experimenting on people feeding them diesel fumes. And this was done in an effort to try to up their regulations for fine particulate matter. They were selectively screening for people who had respiratory and heart issues because they wanted to uh, increase the uh, regulation of fine particulate matter. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Hey, now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com forward slash show. And I'm joined with Dr. Peter Bregan. This is a man who has for many years warned about the negative effects, the unintended consequences of SSRI drugs making the symptoms worse. Uh, being the major contributing factor to many suicides and mass murders. But this part of the program, we've been talking to him about something else that he's been involved in fighting, and that is lobotomies. And now we see that President Obama has this $100 million initiative, the brain initiative that uh, DARPA is pushing through. And of course, just as they used this phony acronym of support, to try to deceive people who were the parents of premature babies into signing on to this program uh, that was going to essentially deprive their premature babies of oxygen or give them too much oxygen, uh, both of them having severe consequences, even death. They deceived them by coming up with this acronym called SUPPORT. Well, Obama's got his own acronym for this DARPA program. The BRAIN Initiative actually stands for Brain Research Through Advancing innovative neurotechnologies. And of course, what this looks like to me when they're talking about changing people's memories, when they're talking about selectively removing memories, this looks like the very crude approach that they did after World War II to veterans with lobotomies. I was just talking to Dr. Bregan about that. Dr. Bregan, uh, they want us to believe that they have something that is very advanced and uh, uh, very uh, precise, surgically, electronically. Now we have high technology to take care of this. But as you're pointing out, this is just going to uh, be more of the same, isn't it? Yeah, let, let me address for a minute just how complex and amazing and poorly understood the brain is. <laughs> yes. You know, the brain has uh, perhaps 100 billion cells. 
nerve cells. Now, these are just the communicating cells, not all the superstructure. They may have up to 10,000 connections, each one. We're talking about trillions of connections going on in the brain. We have so little understanding of the brain, David, that there is no famous brain scientist. If you think about Newton or Einstein or Galileo, all the great names of the physical universe, there are none for the brain because we don't understand how the brain works. We don't understand its operating system. We don't know how it creates uh, language or thoughts or feelings. It's a very dark area. It's a mysterious area. It should be treated with the utmost respect, and we should avoid any kind of tampering inside the brain. The, the brain, each of our brains is probably more complicated than the entire physical universe, because life is so complicated. The universe doesn't speak, it doesn't think. It's, it's simple compared to a human brain. And we need to back off and say, if we're going to do basic research, it has to be on the simplest, genuine neuroscientific level of how does a neuron work, how many connections does it have, what are the chemical influences on it. We can't just stumble into the brain like it's a china shop that we're indifferent toward, barge around breaking things. We won't succeed in what they want to do. They won't succeed in, in fine-tuning people's brains, but they will succeed in developing the ability to injure brains and probably to make people docile. Yes. Because the main effect yes. is docility and apathy when you harm the brain. Yes, absolutely. I think, and I don't know how you view this, but I look at this and I think, for them to come out and say that they're going to do it through DARPA, which is loosely tied to the defense uh, aspect of it. Of course, they do a lot of uh, a lot of things with robots that scare us as well. But when they say they're, they're going to treat PTSD, I think they're just looking to use veterans as guinea pigs. And you're like you're talking about bull in a china shop. I mean, they're going to put this uh, this chip in here and just experiment on these people in a real brute force kind of way. Oh, absolutely. When I started the, the anti-psychosurgery -psycho campaign, they were doing psychosurgery at NIMH. They were doing psychosurgery at the VA. I stopped all of that. But they weren't trying to treat people. No. They were experimenting. They were trying to develop their sense of power and authority over human beings. It's an evil approach to human beings. It's an objectifying of, of our basic nature, which is very spiritual. And whether mm -hmm. you believe in evolution or God or, or both, I mean, our, our brain is, is, has to do with our will. It has to do with our values. It has to do with who we are. And all they're going to be able to do, and they will be able to do this better, they will be able to make people more conforming and more docile. Yes. Lobotomy patients became totally docile. Everything we said came true. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I've been talking to Dr. Peter Bregan about DARPA's $100 million brain project. Uh, they say they're going to help veterans with PTSD. Dr. Bregan is someone who has fought against the brutalities of lobotomies that were performed on World War II veterans for the same justification to help them with PTSD. So we've been talking about what's likely to come out of that. I want to continue that discussion with Dr. Bregan, but before we do, I want to tell you this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by My Patriot Supply. You know, the collapse of the border, the soaring meat prices, it's clear that there is no longer time to wait. You need to start getting prepared today. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com and check out their complete line of preparedness products. My Patriot Supply is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. If you don't have food, you're no threat to the new world order. They're counting on you to be ever-dependent slaves in their system of control, but you can fight back. You can establish independence for yourself and for your family by securing your own private supply of storable food. And there's no better way to prepare than this Patriot-owned company. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex for special offers to listeners of this broadcast. And for a limited time, they're offering additional discounts off their already low price. That website again is MyPatriotSupply.com 
forward slash Alex. Now, Dr. Bregan, just before the break, you were talking about how how crude this is, the uh, the lobotomies that they did, and, and how crude even their most sophisticated technological approaches are going to be with uh, their latest technology because of the complexity of the human brain. And you said something that I thought was very important, that this is really the real effect of this is going to be to destroy people's minds and at the very best to pacify them, to keep them from being a threat to them. I want people to go back and look at this uh, the study, this project that came back, I think it was at the end of uh, December. Uh, it's the Forgotten Soldiers. It's a report that the Wall Street Journal did. And in it, they're talking about how the Veterans Administration, quote, performed brain-altering operations on former servicemen that it diagnosed, and listen to this, depressives or psychotics or schizophrenics, and occasionally on people they identified as homosexuals. In the future, will that list include dissidents? Will it include people who don't agree with the government or the people find uh, that they are political opposition? That's not beyond the realm of speculation. That has been done in totalitarian states. That's the most common diagnosis for to get rid of somebody was with uh, to, to say that they were mentally ill and lock them away in an institution. But I also wanted to tell them this. They, they need to go back and they need to read these stories because I think that's what really drives it home. We can talk in the abstract about what happens with lobotomies, but if they go back and read the case stories of these World War II veterans, one of these fellows, uh, 90 years old, describing his experiences. When they see it personally, I think it'll have an effect on them. And just one last thing before I go back to you, Dr. Bregan. What they said here, that surgery left them, because many people don't understand they've never known anybody with a, a lobotomy. Of course, uh, if you've seen uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that, that centered uh, on that. And, and, of course, that was written by somebody who was part of a government experiment on mind control. That was uh, uh, the, a guy who was involved in the early experiments of LSD who wrote that novel. But the Wall Street Journal points out that the lobotomy surgery left these men little more than overgrown children unable to care for themselves. Many suffered seizures, amnesia, and loss of motor skills. And some died from the operation itself. So I encourage you to go and look at that if you're not familiar with the effects of that. And think about what's going on with that before you allow someone in your family or before you take that treatment yourself, before you think that DARPA's got some kind of a new magic pill for PTSD. Dr. Bregan. Um, the government has actually participated in this country, at least in one project, um, and using shock treatment to suppress political dissidents. I did a show with 60 Minutes, so we had like, three segments about uh, black protesters during the 70s in the Navy who were subjected to shock treatment mm. to control them and to stop them from, uh, from protesting. And shock treatment will stop you from protesting. And uh, shock has been used in our state hospitals uh, Years ago, whole wards would be given shock treatment to make them more docile, more controllable, make them line up at the, uh, you know, on the food lines and do what they were told. Um, if you think about uh, the human brain, I mean, you mentioned a lot of the adverse effects of lobotomy, including some that are more physically obvious. But the fundamental effect of lobotomy is to rob humanity. Because if you think yes. about the frontal lobes, you know, that's what makes us look different from our dogs and from chimpanzees is we've got this big bulging forehead. And that's the flower of human development. And so if you want to conceive of what lobotomy does, all you have to do is conceive of how you think of a human being. If you think of the human being in spiritual terms or as uh, worshiping God, uh, that's going to be knocked out, diminished or destroyed. If you think of human beings as I do as sources of love and caring, that's going to be one of the very first things to go. If you think about people in terms of their judgment, their insight, their future planning, that's going to be injured. In fact, uh, whenever anybody describes uh, the effects of injuring the frontal lobes of the brain, which all of this research will do. It'll all be directed to some extent at frontal lobes. Uh, whatever the person says the frontal lobes are doing is just a projection of what that person thinks human beings are because it's the seat of our humanity, and that's what they're tampering with. Yeah, that's very eloquently put. 
it's, it's a very frightening prospect, especially when we remember, as we recounted in the earlier segments, the history of all these experiments, as, as you mentioned, uh, using electroshock therapy to stop dissidents. Uh, we know that this is something that they're going to do. And as your wife pointed out, this black box project where they want to record what's going on in your mind, we know that they want to know and control everything about us. I want to move on to another topic that has been one that you've been on the forefront of fighting against, and that is the uh, SSRI drugs and the uh, what we call here murder pills. Could you talk to the audience about that and, and your concerns about that? Well, I was the scientific expert for all of the combined Prozac suits back in the 1990s. So I literally got inside Eli Lilly and then later in, inside other drug companies. And I can tell you that they actively suppressed all the data they were getting on violence and suicide and on the ineffectiveness of the drug. For example, when Eli Lilly would get a report from a doctor saying that his patient, had, even one of their own researchers, uh, saying that a patient had committed suicide probably caused by the drug, they would change their own investigator's report to no drug effect. Hmm. or emotional instability. Um, when all the reports of violence came out, they didn't research their own data to see about this. They formed a committee to counter it, and they met secretly. This is not a conspiracy, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. this, they met secretly in early morning hours with the FDA to avoid the press or anybody seeing Eli Lilly coming and going with the FDA to cover this up. Oh. The latest scientific research shows that if you take all the studies sent to the FDA for antidepressants, not just the cherry-picked ones, see, the, the company will do maybe six studies, seven studies, and then they'll cherry-pick two, and those will be the studies used to prove the drug is effective. Well, if you look at all the studies, latest research, the antidepressants don't work. They're ineffective. And then if you look at additional research, it's clear they cause violence and suicide, psychosis and mania. So we have tons of evidence that they don't work and tons of evidence that they are causing horrible mental aberrations by disrupting the function of the brain. And there's just no doubt about this. Um, and every time anymore. we have a, a mass shooting, we always know that there's going to eventually come out that the person was on some kind of SSRI drug. Uh, that seems to be the common thread in all of these. They're, they're coming from all different walks of life, different ages, different social conditions, and yet that seems to be the common thread. Well, there, the way I've evaluated it is there are three common threads. One is nearly every single one has been through psychiatry. Whether they're on a drug or not, Mm -hmm. Nearly everyone has been through psychiatry. That means beefing up psychiatry isn't going to save us from violence. Psychiatrists yeah. make people violent by humiliating them, which is the ultimate source emotionally of most violence, is feeling humiliated and impotent. So psychiatry makes people feel that way with the diagnoses, the drugs, the hospitals. So, And it doesn't identify violence because there's no particular ability to do that within psychiatry. So one thing is they've all, almost all of them, been through psychiatry. Secondly, many of them, maybe not all, certainly not all, but many of them were actively taking psychiatric drugs at the time. And not just SSRIs, but also other kinds of antidepressants, benzodiazepines, uh, which can disinhibit like alcohol, and stimulants, which can drive people over the edge. Um, and the press has lied about this. I was a medical expert in several suits surrounding uh, Columbine. Um, and what I found was that Eric Harris, one of the two youngsters who committed this atrocity and then killed each other, these, Eric was taking an antidepressant for a whole year with increasing doses. He was taking Luvox, which is an SSRI, fluvoxamine is his technical name. Mm -hmm. And he had a blood level of this drug from the coroner's office and also reported to the FDA and the blood level in his system at the time of the shooting. It was ironically called a therapeutic level 
of the drug <laughs> Luvox. And then you get the major media, USA Today, for example, recently coming out with a story reviewing what happened at Columbine and saying we now know that Eric Harris wasn't taking psychiatric drugs at the time. Well, he was, and I can track through his record that he wasn't crazy before he was put on the drugs. He was put on them because he was an obsessive kid and he gets progressively crazier and manic and psychotic, paranoid on the drugs. I sent the information to USA Today. I said, here's the FDA report. Here's how you can get you the autopsy report. He was on drugs. You need to correct this. It was in his system at the time of his death. Therapeutic level. They didn't even respond to me. Not surprising. One of the things that really concerns me, and you've written about this as well, is in the aftermath of Sandy Hook, we saw people on both the left and the right saying, it's psychiatric evaluations that we need more of to start a re to stop a repeat of this and calling for background checks, calling for uh, banning people from owning guns if they've had any connection whatsoever with the psychiatrist or allowing the psychiatrist to essentially declare people without any kind of due process to uh, declare them as being unfit for handing, uh, handling uh, guns, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's an interesting phenomenon. In my fight against lobotomy, I work with Congress, I actually wrote some legislation, um, and the support I got was from conservatives who thought lobotomy was wrong because it tampered with God's given mind and brain, mm -hmm. and from uh, the Black Caucus, who, because I had disclosed that the Harvard people got their funding by claiming they could do surgery on ghetto rioters. And I also found out that they were operating on little black children at the University of Mississippi. The broad liberal community did not support me as anywhere near as much as the conservatives and as the, and libertarians and the black caucus. And I'm really concerned now that conservatives uh, don't see that turning to psychiatry yes. as a solution is, is ultimately totalitarian. They just don't see it. Yes, yes. It, it really surprised me. And it and I felt that that was very, very dangerous. Why do you think that the uh, liberals did not support you in, uh, in that previous effort? Well, I think it's a social control issue. I mean, it was very interesting. At one point, I found out that the Kennedy daughter had been lobotomized before anybody publicized it. And Ken, Ted Kennedy was fighting me on the lobotomy issue. Hmm. I actually threatened, oh, I was such a tough kid in my 30s and 40s. I threatened to disclose photos of Rosemary, you know, in, in her hospital where she, where she was being kept with, with the notes about her being lobotomized to force Ted Kennedy to have hearings. Yeah. Uh, on lobotomy. I think that in the, lib among, in the liberal community, there are many people who do understand these issues, but there are many who so believe in psychiatry. You know, if you don't have a spiritual religion, psychiatry fills in your religion. Psychiatry says that we can tamper with the brain and make you better. We can find genetic causes which don't exist for mental disturbances. We can locate biochemical imbalances. It easily becomes a substitute ideology for believing we have free will, we have values, we have a soul. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that's a part of where liberals get caught, but many, many liberals support our work. You know, it, it's interesting that you had mentioned that, too, that they, they see it as kind of a substitute for religion because... Actually, you know, psyche means soul. So, you know, essentially psychology yeah. actually meant the study of the soul for people who really didn't have any religious connection or, or couldn't bring themselves to, uh, to, to see a God, you know. So it, that does become kind of their God, I guess. And they've got these different schools of psychology, which I guess are kind of like religious denominations. You know, you're Jungian or you're Freudian or what? <laughs> I guess those are... Well, right, David. And it's, and it's a state-supported religion. It's like... Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like Catholicism in the 14th century, yeah. because you have your National Institute of Mental Health, which is fundamentally a support group for psychiatry. You have your FDA, which legitimizes psychiatric drugs, none of which are really 
legitimate. I mean, they're usually studied for three or four or five weeks. Uh, they're completely controlled in the studies by the drug companies. So you have the, all these federal organizations, even the Department of Education has supported the diagnosis of ADHD and the drugging of children. So psychiatry can be viewed in some ways as a materialistic, state-supported religion. Now, that's not its intention. It's not how it thinks of itself, yeah, yeah. but it sure is how it functions in many ways. Boy, that, that is an amazing insight. I, I couldn't agree with you more. That, that's truly amazing. Uh, I want to continue talking to you about uh, SSRI stuff when we come back. You know, one of the things that you mentioned earlier was the FDA cover-up of the drug trials for uh, Eli, Eli Lilly and other companies who are making SSRI drugs. I mean, when you look at this drug approval process, a lot of times I think the FDA is so in bed with these drug companies that essentially what they do is give them, their, their purpose is not really to protect the public, but to give them legal immunity in lawsuits, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. The FDA has yet to even study electroshock machines. They've wow. given shock machines a free ride, and finally they were pressured recently into saying, into saying they were going to actually require shock machines to be tested, but they've done nothing about it. The FDA probably does more harm than good, at least in the area I know of psychiatry, shock wow. and psychosurgery. I've been talking to Dr. Peter Bregan. He's a psychiatrist, an expert witness in many cases about the effects of SSRI drugs. We were just talking before the break about how the FDA actually empowers and provides cover for drug companies, how they selectively cherry-picked their drug studies so they could get the results that they wanted. Dr. Bregan, in this last segment that we've got that's kind of short, I want to talk to you about uh, the executive orders that Obama came out with as part of Obamacare. You wrote an article saying that his executive orders vastly empowered psychiatry and gutted patient rights. Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, your concerns about the kind of mandates that are part of the Affordable Care Act, or as we typically refer to it as Obamacare, those kind of mandates and the effect that they're going to have against patients' rights and in favor of uh, the psychi psychiatric community? Well, remember that psychiatric records are considered medical records. Therapy records are considered medical records. All of them are covered by insurance or will be eventually covered by insurance, or they'll have to opt out for privacy. And all of that is going to these central collection uh, agencies, you know, that are sprinkled throughout the states to bring together all the data and to organize it electronically. There is no way that that's going to remain private forever. I mean, we have corporations being broken into. We have the Pentagon's uh, computers being uh, oh, broken yeah. into. Yeah. There's no way that your health records are going to stay private. And you have to be really careful now about telling any health care provider anything personal about yourself, which is an absolute disaster. And Obama was also calling for a strengthening of the ability to lock people up against their will. But there's no, no way psychiatry can uh, discern who's violent and who is even harmful to themselves. What that results in when you increase involuntary treatment is, is uh, you might have to put away 10,000 people to stop one person from from causing harm, and you'll never even know if you stop that one person because there's just no way to figure all that out. Oh, yeah. Using, empowering psychiatry is a disaster. Uh, I've, David, always, I've always said that when people give up their liberty for security, they wind up in a maximum security cell, and that's literally oh, what will that happen. Good. Yeah, that's literally that what will happen. That's really, really good. I'd like to address two, two positive things, if I could, quickly. Sure. Yes. One, one is don't rush and take just stop taking your psychiatric drugs after listening to us today because stopping drugs is as dangerous as starting them because it throws your brain out of balance once again. And I've written a book called Psychiatric Drug Withdrawal, which talks about safe and effective withdrawal from drugs. The other point I want to say is whether you believe your brain is God-given or evolution-given, you have within yourself the power to overcome 
your worst emotional suffering. You have the power within yourself to regain your autonomy. You can become more and more self-determined. The key to a good life is moral, ethical, and principled relationships with other human beings. And human beings heal each other. Mechanics doesn't heal us. Psychiatry doesn't heal us. You know, don't accept this cultural avalanche that is robbing us of our belief in ourselves as souls, as human beings who can handle our own lives. And if we need help, we need human, caring, loving help. We don't need destructive interventions into our brains, whether it's stimulants for our children or That is so wise. Excellent, excellent advice from Dr. Peter Bregan. If you want to know more about him, to find his books, you can go to bregan.com. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate, and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating. This is trailblazing. And the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com.